the common denominator, the one variable, the one thing that is involved in every single closing, no matter what, is... You know, we have a lot of agents on the team that are newer, that are trying to establish like a pipeline, right? Um, in, in a sense of like, you know, some agents will close like one deal here and then we'll spend two months without closing anything. What would you say to that type of agent, right? That That is, does not have like a consistent uh, way of doing business. I would say that it's the same. It goes right back to what we talked about in the beginning of the conversation in terms of it's whatever you want to view, whatever your perception is of that, because the way I perceive it is, is that's normal. That's normal for agents to go through the ups and downs and have the roller coaster effect, the whiplash where you have a closing or two and then no closings for three months and you start doubting yourself and then you close four more. You know, it, it, you have to go through that those peaks and valleys. That's every single agent on the face of the planet that eventually got to the consistent closings had to go through that period, right? That phase in their career where it was a hit or miss, you know, month to month. So just understand first off that it's completely normal to go through that. It's it's not the market's fault, okay? The market's producing closings every single day. So it's not the market's fault. It's one of those things, once you learn it, you can't unlearn it. And once you show me something one time, I got it. And so when you have these, these moments where you have a closing and then no closings and then closings, you gotta take a look at that span of time and say, okay, what did I spend my time doing through that, through that period, okay? Once I got stuff under contract, did I just start servicing those deals and kind of get away from what got me there? And then once they were closed, then I had nothing, then I had to go back. You know, look at your activities. Are you doing one thing that led to led to pending deals? And then and all of a sudden you're not doing that anymore to get the pending deals closed. And then you come back to it. If you look at that, then that's a dead giveaway of why you're having a hit and miss kind of career in the beginning. So then, okay, if you can look at that and realize it, okay, then you have to say to yourself, okay, so what are these activities that got me to the pending deals and how can I do them on a consistent basis regardless if I have things under contract regardless of anything else going on I have to time block for these activities that got the pending deals because if you do the activities that got you the pending deals consistently then you'll have consistent closings so it all comes back to whatever you did to get the consistent to get the deals in the first place you didn't do those activities consistently and that's what caused you not to have consistent sales so so it, it takes most agents having to go through that a couple Couple times to understand that and then to actually get it together and understand okay here's what I got to do and I got to do this every day for like three years straight you know I can't just do this for three months and then do this for three months and then do this for three months it's got to be across the board so I think once you understand that and you look inside your your actual business individually you'll find those activities and you'll start to put the pieces of the puzzle together but it's completely normal do you have a structure do you have a schedule that you try to stick to and and, and i know things happen in our career where like you were saying you know we're supposed to be calling from 9 to 12 but sometimes you have to go show property or write a contract or negotiate a deal but do you generally try to stick to a structure yeah for sure you know i think i think the most highly successful people in the world their routines are like they're non-negotiable right and so I'm a lot like that I wake up 4 30 I go to the gym I answer messages on Instagram I do my little family breakfast take the dogs out play with my daughter eight o'clock I'm organizing my day all right so from 8 to 8 30 I'm gonna organize my day I'm gonna prioritize I'm gonna make notes I'm gonna go through my email I'm gonna get caught up on everything I need to get caught up on where I can feel good about now moving forward with with uh, with action okay so from there right at 8 30 i want to start trying to figure out who i'm calling today i want to do all my research get all my ducks in a row get everything lined up to where at nine o'clock i can start dialing and from nine to twelve i want to be on the phone 9 to 12, 9 to 12, 9 to 12. And it doesn't matter if you're cold calling or calling internet leads or sphere of influence. It, I don't, it doesn't matter who you call. The common denominator, the one variable, the one thing that is involved in every single closing, no matter what, is a voice to voice real conversation. That's the common denominator. So think about it for a second. If that's the common denominator, then in order for us to have as many closings as we can possibly have, we need to have as many conversations as humanly possible.
people. That's really just the bottom line of it all. The only thing great about the digital marketing part of this is that you use it to get to voice to voice. Too many people are just doing digital for the sake of digital and they're not really using it to try to come back to the voice to voice. In our business, in real estate, in our business, voice to voice is the common denominator that, that will enable right and initiates the closing until you talk to them there's no there's not a pot even a possibility of a deal even that even the big teams that are spending millions of dollars on zillow leads what do they have they have a huge team of agents calling those leads non-stop they have a team that give the leads they call the leads they're calling so just just think about the big picture of everything for a second and realize that when you balance the voice to voice and the digital and you balance it together and you spend time on both that's where you become a dangerous agent that's where you become a very dangerous agent too many agents are either calling all day or either digital marketing all day and they're not doing both if you can balance both then you can be as successful as you want to be when you say right? digital marketing what are you referring to specifically like post on, on, on social media or everything listen anything digital okay I do a weekly email, that's digital. Posting on social media, responding to comments, following and commenting and, and liking uh, other people's content that live in your market, sending people messages that live in your market, running Facebook and Instagram ads, making videos, uh, working on your website, working on SEO, doing Google ads, all that stuff. Every, anything that has to do with digital, everything, you work on that all afternoon. Make your videos, uh, post your content, you know, but you got to use, you got to use social to, you, you, you know, you want engagement, but you're not engaging with anyone. You've got to be on there and you have to be engaging. You have to be commenting on people's stuff and responding to people's comments under your stuff, okay? Reaching out, messaging people, how's it going? Have real conversations with people. You know, when people see you on social, they recognize that you're actually active there actively trying to connect with people and help people right comes back to using your career as a vehicle to help we're just trying to get to know people right and digital is a great way to do that but remember we're just using this as a gateway to get to the voice to voice so when we are dming and messaging and we get in these great conversations and we find out they are looking to do something soon you know cool let me give you a call tomorrow what's your number or they're not looking to do anything soon. Cool, is there an agent you would work with? Do you have an established relationship with an agent in the area that you would work with if you were to do something? You know, I'd love to stay in touch with you. What is your email? What is your cell phone? Now you've got their data. The more data you have, whatever agent has the most data is gonna win. So the reason in 2017, I quit building my real estate business. That was the first year hit a million dollars in GCI. And that was the fourth year in a row that I was at a hundred deals a year. I quit trying to build my real estate business and now I literally live off the data through my weekly email that I send in my database. I still continue to close 100 deals a year and I've hit a million dollars every year in GCI, spending like five, six, seven hours a week on my real estate business while I go build other businesses. Why do I have the power to do that? Because I have data. I've got enough data of people in my market to to maintain that level of business without chasing business. Now, if I put all my time and effort into chasing business, I could probably do twice as much business, but I'm okay with 100 deals at a very easy pace. That's a very easy pace for my assistant and I. It's two deals a week, and it's just like we do that like nothing's happening. Like that's just easy breezy. We've been doing it for so long now, and, it, and it's comfortable, and it gives me a million dollars a year to invest into other businesses and you know so on and so forth.